Welcome back to Haunted and Historic Australia for another adventure, this time looking at the HMAS Parramatta. We took a little stroll at dusk in Parramatta and we saw the most beautiful sunset over the city. Just down near the Parramatta River, where the old wharf was, the old Queen's Wharf, is the memorial of the HMAS Parramatta. We thought we'd have a little look and document it for you. The HMAS Parramatta was a river-class torpedo boat destroyer of the Royal Australian Navy. It was ordered in 1909 for the Commonwealth Naval Forces. She was actually one of six naval destroyers that were built around this time. They formed the Australian destroyer Flotilla. Her other ships made around this time were the HMAS Huon, Swan, Torrens, Warrigo and Yarra, other rivers around Australia. She was launched in 1910 using a ceremonial axe. With the outbreak of World War I, the HMAS Parramatta was heavily used in different parts of the Pacific Ocean, along with Warrigo and Yarra. Even after the war, she was used in the Mediterranean and even fitted with a warhead. She also joined the Allies at Constantinople and was used to dispatch mail between Sebastopol and Constantinople. She left the Mediterranean in 1918. Her service in the Black Sea and Sea of Marmora ended. She ended up back in Australian waters from 1919. Back in Aussie waters, she was repaired a little bit from her frolicking overseas and was brought back for the arrival of the Prince of Wales in Australia. She was then put back into reserve and ended up at the Cockatoo Dockyard for dismantling in 1929. Once she had parts of her from the Navy removed, she was just a simple hull, being used on the Hawkesbury River as an accommodation vessel for prisoners. She was moored in the river but broke adrift during a storm and ran aground. Her time on the water had come to an end. Her wreck remains in the Hawkesbury River, but parts of her have been used as the memorial. Her stern remains on the Parramatta River and the bow was taken to Garden Island where another memorial has been set up in her honour. Here we are down at the Parramatta River on George Street coming up to the uh, where the Albion Hotel is and we've come down to capture um, some footage of the HMAS Parramatta Memorial and um, and also document the extreme changes that have occurred uh, in this whole area. Geez, in in the last probably decade, uh, it's amazing the transformation of the place. Um, and they're something that they were had many years ago, um, which was the. The tramway um, is actually coming back and it follows all the way down here and there it is going up George, George Street there right up to the end of George Street but it also goes down as it goes down the actual old um, area of uh, where the where Church Street used to be the public walkway uh, at the corner of um, I believe it's at the corner of the in Church Street where the what's well Church and George at the corner of Church and George where you have uh, just up from the um, was it just up from the Woolpack Hotel and um, there's a corner there where it's got the Commonwealth Bank and it's got the um, it's also got the Westpac Bank on the other corner. Now that area there, following all the way down to Prince Alfred Park, is going to be um, dedicated to the um, the new tramway. So here we are at the HMAS Parramatta Memorial, the official memorial to the HMAS Parramatta, which is on George Street. Um, this used to be 
not as not as nice uh, and it just used to be a lot simpler than this but um, in the ensuing years they've they've actually come ahead gone ahead and they've made it a little bit more fitting for the old ship that went down and I think it's it's a nice tribute to the, to the old to the old um, the old HMAS Parramatta that was um, obviously the city's namesake uh, and well as you can see here this was first um, a memorial memorialized at this point in 1981 but they have fixed it up a lot um, in the in since that time um, yeah and like I said it's fitting you know and so it should be there's some more information over here it just gives you an idea of what happened and obviously when the ship was uh, used during the war and some old pictures and, and things which is good. There we are. Makes it a bit better to see. Get some old pictures here. There we go. Lovely. And then there was a recommissioned ship. It went all the way on for 30 years by the look, see, up until late, uh, 1991, that was known as the Parramatta 3. And the Parramatta 2, obviously, there. And then there was this one, the Parramatta 4, which was news to me. Uh, it was commissioned on, in 03, so therefore that would still be part of the Navy. And the reasons were that this particular ship uh, and its history is very important um, not only to the Australian um, you know the Imperial forces and the defense forces um, through the years but also because of uh, the ships well the ship what, what the ship went through in World War one And it's basically it's um, it's importance to the navy, but also as a tribute to the Parramatta city. Let me just collect this information here again. That particular memorial. We come back. And we'll show you the large city. For this, for this tribute to the HMAS Parramatta, George Street Parramatta, right near to the Albion Hotel, which is right up just by on those trees and MacArthur Street Bridge. It was quite interesting going down and having a look at the stern of the old HMAS Parramatta. It's a lovely memorial that they've set up in its honour. And if you go around the front, we went a little when it was quite dark, but you can see where the front of the boat would have been and its original anchor, I believe. It looks a little bit like an anchor at the front there. But it is magnificent when you see it in person. And there was a couple of things on the ground near to it. I hope that wasn't a body. But um, going down to the river as well, you can see down under the bridge along the river there, the new wharf that was built for the Parramatta Jet Cat a couple of years ago now that replaced the old Queen's Wharf, which would have been where we were standing along that kind of river edge there where the HMAS Parramatta is. But it was a beautiful evening, a full moon, and a wonderful sunset that we got to experience down there. 
it really is a great place to come down and see. We should have done it in the daytime because there's actually a Harris Park Heritage Walk, which is 2.4 kilometres long. It starts off at the Parramatta Wharf and goes right into Harris Park, but along the way it has various signposts which have information about the history of Parramatta and Harris Park and what went on and a couple of pictures as well. We're definitely going to have to come back during the daylight hours and have a look at this ourselves because it looks quite interesting, but very hard to see in the dark. Now, they also have a memorial dedicated to the first people who were involved in Australia's military back in the day. There is a statue that looks similar to a bullet, which the first people of the Darug Nation Baramadigal clan used to call fire sticks. They were basically guns and they've got a bullet set up in the honour of those who served for Australia's military. It is quite interesting and definitely worth having a look at. They also have further down near the water's edge a structure of canoes built in the honour of the Baramadigal clan and the Darug Nation. They were apparently well known for the canoes that they had that had fire on top which was a dirt mound that was placed on the tip of the canoe, I believe, and fire set to it so as they could have light in the darkness when they were using their canoes possibly at dusk or in the evening hours. But it is definitely worth a look and worth exploring Parramatta if you haven't already. On the way out of the area, we noticed across the road from the HMAS Parramatta that there was an older style house we were definitely going to find out a bit more information about what this house was. And apparently it's Lee Lodge. I'm not 100% sure how old Lee Lodge is, but it is something we want to investigate. It does look quite old. It was a lovely night to go and have a look at Parramatta. You don't have to go when there's a nice sunset and a full moon, but definitely go down and see it when you've got a chance. It's well worth the look. And it's our history. We need to have a look at this. It's so interesting and informative. We didn't know about these kind of things before we'd gone down. Aside from the HMA as Parramatta, we did a little bit of research on before we went down there. We had no idea that there was so much to offer down at the old Queen's Wharf. The wharf has since gone. We couldn't see it in the dark, but we're definitely going to have another look at the area and see if we can find any remnants of where that Queen's Wharf was. But definitely stay tuned. We're going to have more adventures and definitely some more criminals, cutthroats and convicts coming up. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and let us know if there's any places in the Parramatta area that we haven't covered yet. We know there are still a couple of gems and we're definitely going to be finding them out. But there's also other areas in Sydney we want to explore too, including the rocks. We definitely want to get down and see that too. But like, subscribe and share and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our episodes. Aussie made.